Hey YouTube, Jay Yersh checking in. Uh, I'm going to do something interesting today. I don't think I've ever done this before. Uh, create some interesting content on the Jay Yersh channel. Uh, today I'm going to be cooking something that my Aunt Pat has called hot dish. It is a technically a goulash. Uh, the ingredients, we've got uh, two 36 ounce packages of meat. That's 2.25 pounds a piece, giving me uh, four and a half pounds of beef. And this is good stuff, 96% lean. Uh, we've got one bag of Skinner large elbow macaroni. We have, let me get my hands on this thing as big as hell. Let's see, we've got. I can get it to come out of the bag. It doesn't want to be born. A rather large onion. Um, sometimes we put garlic in there. I'll go ahead and kick some light on here. Um, but this time I'm not because as I'm getting older, I'm discovering that I don't garlic doesn't quite agree with me as well as it used to. Uh, let's see here. Where am I looking for? I'm looking for. One can, so we do a can of diced tomatoes, and actually, uh, let's see, here's a can of Rotel, I think I need a, usually I do a big can of that, there's another can of Rotel, probably do three cans of Rotel, one can of diced tomatoes, and this is the uh, Rotel Hot, Rotel Hot, you get it, I mean, Come on now, you can't have this stuff and not have it just totally where it just melts the roof of your mouth off. That's three three root cans of Rotel and then a thing of diced tomatoes. Uh, <clears throat> we will be cooking the, the meat here in this uh, cast iron skillet. Seasoning with chili powder and, and a little bit of iodized salt. You'll notice I've got uh, the three other pans here. Uh, because when I start getting ready to pull the trigger on this thing, that goes there, I think. This is going to be full on combat cooking. In other words, everything's going to be happening at once. And it's going to be happening very, very fast. When everything comes up to temperature and I start throwing ingredients in the pots, um, we'll do probably cook the noodles here. That'll actually require two trips because uh, I'll only be able to put half of this bag into this pot at one time to get it to boil. And as soon as it's done, I'll pull it out. I'll have a... Uh, okay. Uh, oh, there it is. I will have a strainer positioned, ready to go. Um, something else very key in making hot dish is to have the appropriate turkey basting pan. This is a big ass pan. Here's my arm and my elbow here just to tell you how big the sucker is. I'm not sure of the exact capacity here. Wouldn't it be nice if you have pots and pans were you know embossed or something on here? It would say you know 100 quart or whatever the hell it is. That would sure be nice, but apparently someone's not that forward thinking for people who chefs or whatever that want to cook on this stuff. Um, so like I said, we'll have the noodles going here. Uh, I'm going to get uh, the corn going here, do a big old thing of corn, do a big old thing full of frozen peas, get all those. I, I, I pre-cook them. Uh, my mother used to poo-poo that. Oh no, you don't have to cook them. You just throw them in the pot and they'll cook when you put it in the oven and bake it. Well, I've never cooked it that way. I like to have all my ingredients ready to go and fully cooked when you throw them in the pot and because what I'm going to do when I get this thing going I'll have the oven preheat to I don't know 375 or whatever and once all the ingredients are cooked and I throw them in this pan and start stirring this whole thing up then at that point putting the oven to finish it off just evens out the temperature on everything because it's going to be in series it's going to be I'm going to get a batch of meat. I'm going to throw that in. Then the corn will come up. I'll throw that in. Then the peas will come up. And then another thing of meat will come in. And this stuff will be all... You know, I don't have a big, huge pro chef range and big, huge pots to cook all the ingredients simultaneously and all at once have them all come up and, and be ready to throw into the pot. So 
putting in the oven after you're done for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes maybe, serves primarily to warm them all up to a consistent temperature. And it also it gives a chance for the flavors to commingle. Uh, and that's, that is very, very important. Uh, I think, I think I am good to go. I have all my ingredients. I'm going to, uh, uh, chop up that onion. Um, you know, I've got a Christmas present over there, a Cuisinart food processor, <laughs> but I, I was, I'm not ready to use that yet because number one, it's a Christmas present. Number two, I was going to do, uh, an unboxing video on that. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so I will leave you with this because uh, I have to turn everything on, get all the stuff coming up to temperature, and I will kick this thing in gear as soon as we are ready to rumble. All right, YouTube. Um, wow, that's a wide shot. Guess it's. See what's going on. Gonna kind of cut in here just a little bit. Um, shot out of the stove, what's going on. We'd already started, I kind of forgot to hit the record button on the camera. Like, get, get in a zone, and it ain't auto zone. What I was doing here is, everything came up to temperature, is started going. So, so far, really, you haven't missed anything. I did uh, already. Get one round of beef cooked. So basically what I'm doing here to cook the beef, you can, or whatever, you know, portion you decide to cook, put it in the pan, and then give it a nice little sprinkle of salt. Then you hit, hit with the, uh, with the uh, chili powder. Don't know if it's possible to actually put too much chili powder in. Because I'm cooking here, I'm actually and then I'm using a, the spatula to kind of break the meat up as I go. Because as you put it in from E6 the trash, as you put it, more trash, squirrel. As you put it in the package, it's going to be fresh from the grinder, so it all kind of clumps together. So that's why you're going to sit here and use your spat or use your flipper. It's kind of a little mini guillotine, kind of guillotine it up. And you really, I mean, we're just browning this meat. We're not really doing anything outrageous. We're not trying to cook it to death. Because, you, you know, just like I said earlier in the video, you're going to put it in that uh, cooking pan that's right behind me over here. And uh, you're gonna finish off cooking it in the oven. But what I'm trying to avoid, that's why I'm sitting here running this uh, kind of little choppy things here. I'm taking all these clumps of beef and breaking them up so they're, it, it'll resemble taco meat by the time it gets done. You know, individual little, little pieces, none really no bigger than I don't know, the marble. Of course, marble's come in a lot of different sizes. None bigger than a one half inch ball bearing for you engineer types. I want to be all technical about stuff. for as much chili powders I'm putting in there, it sure doesn't seem like the meat's just... This is kind of, when you add the chili powder, it's kind of the taste. I mean, you know when you just give it, dust it and dust it till it's kind of coated, but not ex excessively so. And trust me, if you guys out there who watch my channel decide to actually try making this dish, you might fuck it up the first time. You know, just write it off and as a learning experience, because all chefs make, every once in a while have a, a bad batch. I mean, it's just, 
kind of part of the part of the rite of passage. Well, okay, this, this batch here is almost done. I got, I got this stove just pisses me off. And this is actually 96% lean. I decided, usually I take this thing, I have a whole pickle jar or mayonnaise, whatever jar, yeah, pickle jar, and I'll drain the grease off. But it's really, there's not a lot of grease in here. So this time around, I'm just gonna kind of go with it and 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 leave it in with everything and just because there's just not enough there really to cry about. So I'll go for a wide shot here as I uh, and I'm nursing a, a screwed up wrist, rotator cuff, whatever, I'm wiping out on my one wheel. Yours truly is a freaking genius who still thinks he's 24. All right, let's bring, bring the stove back in the shot. I'm going to implement. We have a bird's eye frozen corn. Usually I buy the big industrial commercial bag from Wally World. Why do I buy the big commercial bag? Cause to eat a lot of vegetables and buying fresh vegetables when you're a bachelor is challenging to eat stuff before it goes bad on you really quickly let's get some corn in here how much corn am i adding see the cool thing about making hot dish is there really almost isn't a set recipe you like a lot of corn in your hot dish add a lot of corn now I've been adding four cups. Wow, that's a lot of fucking corn. Yeah. <laughs> probably, I probably used two, three cups at least. Wow, that's a lot of corn in there. Good times. Oh. Got more vegetables than anything else. I got excited here. Let's go ahead and. Oh, there goes the peas. And I just want to warn you now, when you get done cooking this, your kitchen is going to be a frigging disaster. There's going to be a lot of cleanup going on. All right, you can stop all that fizzing. We'll just, I'm going to take the cover off of that and just let it uh, boil for a little while. And I'm going to actually take a quick bite sample of the peas once they get to kind of start getting wrinkly that's probably time to pull them off and go ahead and uh, drain drain off the water and and uh, chunk it in the pan with everything else and I, at some point i gotta chop i guess when we get done doing the meat and I'll wait for the rest of this crap to catch up I have a good chance to chop my onion and uh, throw the throw the rest of the ingredients in the pan too. Try a trick here. actually work. So putting the top on the pot, you can also take something like a wooden spoon and lay it across the top of your pot as it's boiling. And when that foamy crap builds up, your great mystical, magical things only known to those who practice Wicca, because they're experts with bubbling cauldrons. It prevents all of the wonderful juices and the eye of newt and the wing of bat and all the other stuff from coming out.
And you know how much is too much salt? I just dust it and only, only do the salt once. Because you know what the cool thing about salt is? You make your hot dish and it's not salty enough. You can always add more. That's a cool thing. But if you make it too salty, it's done. You're probably going to feed it to the garbage can. What do we got going on here? We we curling yet? Oh, uh, ever so slightly. Okay, now I got my new little water up to temperature. Corn water is still trying to come up. Of course, it was frozen corn, so it's sorry ass stove. Next house I get, from hell or high water is having a gas freaking stove and oven. This electric cooktop is total lame, totally lame. I think it could actually maybe become. By 10 to 20 percent of the chef my mom was if I uh, actually had good cooking utensils let's cook this thing I got here that it's got the two front burners are multi size you can make it turn one way for small pots and one way for bigger pots Just a dusting. Oh yeah, that's done. Uh, inner one here will kill that. What's going here? I also have me there. If I was an octopus, I could really be slamming this thing. One set of hands doing the noodles. One set of hands doing the beef. Of course, the same thing we said too. If I had a girlfriend, girlfriend could be handling all the vegetables. This ought to be fun. This is my dad. It's Jay. Hey, Jack. What's going on? Did you watch the video? Yes, I did. You know what? I've done more installs on vehicles, so uh, you know, even if that vi that video doesn't 100% apply, I think I'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, let's get it done. Okay, I have a telephone interview or pre-screening at 11 o'clock. Uh, it only will last uh, guaranteed 30 minutes because the lady I'm interviewing with has uh, a hard stop. So uh, just. Be aware of that, and yeah, we can do that. That'll be that'll be fine. You got a nice place to eat there somewhere. Yep. Yes, I do. Not too nice, but pretty cool. Well, I mean, it depends. Uh, you know what 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 you feel like eating. Mexican, uh, don't really have a, a burger place that I'm in love with. Um, kind of a general eatery type place. Um, uh, there's uh, always Hutchins Barbecue. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I think I gave you sticker shock the last time we did barbecue. Yeah, I couldn't afford another barbecue place. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I understand. Where are these places in the kitty? Yeah, Pr Princeton, Princeton has all of the fast food joints. <laughs> uh, there is there is a, a, a Chinese place that we could grab. Well, actually, we could we could sit in and eat if you wanted to. 
Shit. Yeah, you'll come north on, on 75. You exit Highway 5. Um, <clears throat> you'll, you'll come to the second, second red light, FM 546. Make a right on 546. Yeah. Yeah, Hill and Dale, up and down, in and out, and you eventually go, come across a long straight bridge. Yeah. And then the, there's a street on the left that dead ends into, into FM 546. It's Bridge Farmer. And you want to go north on Bridge Farmer. I'm sorry? Bridge Farmer. Bridge Farmer. Turn left there, and you're looking for Overland Drive. And uh, you, make, you can only make a right on Overland. And you'll go uphill, and you come to Meadow. Make a right on Meadow. And you keep, uh, keep on coming up a hill, and then uh, you come back. You see o Overland will, will be a dead era. It'll tee into Meadow. It'll be Overland again. You want to make a right on Overland. And you, I'm... I don't know, fourth house, fifth house down on the left. You'll you'll see my you'll see my camper and my the white truck and the excursion. Yeah. Yeah, can we closed out the deer lease. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Uh, they should be pretty prompt in uh, calling me up. Alright, sounds good. Alright, bye. See here, I've got five things going on almost. Been getting this silly meat seasoned and browned. You get the peas drained and tossed in the pan. The, the meat is by large, by and large, what will occupy your time and energy the most when making hot dish. Like, that's why you almost need to have another set of hands managing the cooking of the stuff in the pots. And while waiting for the pots to come to boil and the, and the food contained therein to be ready, they can also be slicing onions and pour, emptying out cans of product. Uh, gosh, don't forget to stir the noodles. Nothing worse than a burned noodle. stuck to the cooktop. I'm off camera, but what I'm doing is pouring water out of these peas. Wow, there's not a lot of water left in here. And I'm going to add, add the peas to the mix. Okay, we can 86 that. Back to the meat. Corn is going. Noodles are going. All this stuff. As soon as I get this meat, this batch of meat done, I'm done with meat. And I can uh, turn back around and. Uh, wow. See, so we're still in the shot. Okay. Amazing that that's if 
fix that up. I, don't, I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. I don't think there'll be any Hollywood special effects here. season this. You know what? I said you can never be too much freaking chili powder. I wasn't kidding. And yes, if you have a wayward piece of meat and it goes flying off on your cooktop, hopefully you were smart and started off with a clean cooktop. So wayward food can be put back into its pot of origin. Alright. Glove up. The glove of cooking love. Here, keep that in the pot. Side of the coat stove is definitely a mess. Let's see, what we got here going on the corn. Even that is. Check this out. Hmm. Decide if it's done or not. Yeah. Most of us are saying that's done. So this will be the back burner going off. Throw the pot lid on there. Drain this bad boy. Poured on the corn. Usually, when I do the corn, I just have the pre the bag, smaller bags, and don't really pull them out of whatever inven or out of the bigger bulk bag. But oh yeah, you're done. Nice, nice and. Delicious. They're not al dente and they're definitely not Pittsburgh style.
Next batch of batch of water. I'm done with the meat, so I can put away the olive oil, put away the salt, put away the chili powder. All right, wow, that's pretty much a freaking mess right there. That's that's cranking. Wait for that to come up to temperature. Let's see. We can, I wonder if I can get over here. We'll do a wide shot, and you can see. My handy dandy country style breakfast nook folding awesome rustic table that I have breakfast on. It's got two gold wings on it that fold up, fold down, fold up and fold down with the deal that kicks out to hold them up. So uh, pretty awesome. They had a real winner on their hands. They came up with that concept. All right, we're gonna throw in. I wait for that water to come up to boil. Toss in, uh, we've got the canned diced tomatoes, and you're going to notice, I don't drain these tomatoes, we'll just leave the fluid in there, that doesn't bother anything. I have three cans of Rotel, this would be shocking, I, this is, this is going to be a very, very full pan. I think I was a little went definitely over over the top on the corn. Definitely over the top on the corn. We'll see. All, all this crap fit. Alright. Cans of Rotel. Now, what I need, part of my cooking repertoire, this is, it's a, how do you call this a ladle? No, it's a big ass spoon with holes in it, which works great when you have juicy stuff and you're trying to mix it. So I'm going to sit here. Get out of the way, remote control goes in there, water is there, guys, there's crap piled up on here that doesn't even need to be here. Penis in the penis in the anus. Okay, so that water's still coming up to temperature. I think this is going to be just about right. Definitely use some more peas. Four and a half pounds of meat. I'm just sitting here kind of stirring Get all of these lovely, wonderful, healthy ingredients all commingled so you don't have a pocket because you put all this stuff in kind of layers. You want to get that beef all spread out, and get the noodles all spread out, and lots of stuff in between them. Wow, it's uh those three cans of Rotel, I might st I'm tempted to throw in another can of diced tomatoes. I'm 
sure tempted. I mean, you can see the tomatoes in here, but it's kind of like toppings on a Domino's pizza. You can count them. I want, I want to get lost in my, t in my condiments. You have plenty of stuff and balance between the white and the green and the yellow and the red. And I think the red in this dish is significantly underrepresented. So, uh, 86 cans, bags, and trays, and crap. All right, well, uh, let's see, how can I set up the shot? First, you can see how wonderful this is. That's still coming to boil. It's a big mess, whatever. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Using my pantry door, get these shots. Onion, knife, sharpener. I'm sure, someone in the comments below will tell me how I'm not drawing the knife across the stone properly. That may be. Towel, in case there's any metal remnants, we'll do here. And the pot of water is about to come on. Ah, oh, jeez, freaking wrist. Feels better than it did the day I, Thanksgiving day when I came off the uh, one wheel at about 20 miles an hour, bounced off the ground three times. Can't do that stupid stuff anymore. All these days. It, end up with a permanent dehabilitating injury. I don't have time for that. Don't have time for the pain. But then, say you don't have time for the pain, but you know, really, honestly, who has time for the pain? I mean, what do you do? You just go through a drive through and pull up and say, yeah, yeah, I can only have a, a black eye and a busted lip and, oh yeah, if you could go ahead and, uh, and, uh, break my ankle and, and uh, you know, give me a, you know, a raging case of shingles and, 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 and raging case of, uh, I don't know, whatever else is painful, sunburn, <laughs> I guess. All right, so I think I've got, it's like, when have you peeled off enough layers on the onion? Guys, I'm gonna start seriously crying here in a minute. Cry like a little baby. Definitely gonna be making some trash. Debris. Get that over here. These cans can go in there. Don't run stuff down the drain because I have a septic system. And God, the lighting here is terrible. One of the reasons this house is just terrible. Anyway. And my pot is boiling. Multitasking. Where's my stuff? Okay. 
got, it, got my stove all warmed up. Probably could have delayed that slightly. You know what? Um, I watched a video, Chef Ramsey was talking about the proper way to slice an onion. Having a sharp knife is definitely key. Watching your fingertips is key. How many keys can you have this equation? As many as are required. Processor. All right, stand by. So, camera here, I'm just stirring the pot on uh, the noodles. Get that going. Let's see what I guess I think the easiest way here. Now, if I was a hibachi chef, I could be making little volcanoes and stuff and setting them on fire. But no, I'm just this network engineer that appreciates a really, really good home cooked meal. do with these onions I'm basically mincing is that even a word making making little onion squares how about that all these big pieces made into not hit me yet. Um, see what we're going to do. We'll get this whole onion appropriately reduced to little square little pieces of onion. Now my eyes are starting to burn. Burn a lot. <sighs> of course, it could be worse. I could be back in nuclear biological chemical training and basic training, or basic combat training in the army. And we went to a little, I don't know, twenty by twenty brick building, no windows, metal doors, oh my gosh, Whew. and the drill sergeant, there was a hot plate on a little crappy rickety table in the middle of the room, the drill sergeant had some powder, which was powdered CS gas, dumped it in this Folgers can, then all of a sudden this yellow smoke starts emitting out of the can, oh man, you can feel your face just burning. Then, drill sergeant goes, Okay, private, take off your mask and hold your arms directly outreached. Or, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Private was trying to hold his breath. Well, drill sergeant said, Okay, private, now you're going to say your name and your social. <laughs> oh, my God. 
some of the boogers were at least eight feet long coming out of people's faces and they're out of their nose and everything else and I think one or two privates puked all over the place. Hooray nuclear biological chemical training but it did reinforce the point that you need to trust your equipment and also when you hear see the appropriate signal uh, uh, which I, I could demonstrate you could probably just YouTube it <laughs> Uh, you're pumping your arms extended and they kind of pump up or not up and down but rotate at the elbows up and down and accompanied by the shout of gas 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 you better not be the private that has his head up his ass and going huh what <laughs> we're up to 40 minutes here let me uh let me see how can we do this Put this over here Sorry folks, as I kind of manipulate you a little bit, trying to get my uh, camera positioned to get the shot without causing a problem here. There we go. Uh, I don't say that. How about straight? Straight is good. All right, so what was I saying? U.S. Army, you see the, the cloud coming from America after a kind of a boom sound. That's the sound of the, can the canister popping. You start making this deal right here and yelling gas, gas, gas. But actually what you do first, you see that, you grab, go down here on your leg and you rip that pro mask out. It should already be folded backwards. You jam it on your face, strap up, tighten the straps, block the vents, blow to purge it. It's make sure it seals around your uh, face. And uh, <laughs> then you could yell gas, gas, gas. It really suck if you're in the middle of gas, 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 all of a sudden here's some sarin gas or something and you get a lung full of it and you just choke and blood comes out everywhere. And yeah, it'd be kind of messy. I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, making a mess. All right, so we've got the onions. Got the onions. Not nearly the mess that I thought it was going to make, but... A couple onion chunks, get those back where they belong. The sounds and the smells of Jay's Kitchen. Normally when I put together this thing, I'll invite friends over and we'll have a big feed and have them bring over some pie and some ice cream or something. But then, hold on a tick, I'm not handling dairy too well. Although I, I figured out that, you know, I have breakfast and I have a little bit of milk for breakfast, that doesn't bother me. And have maybe one cup measured of ice cream and just get uncomfortable. Have a little bit bloating, a little bit of gas, but it subsides after a little while. Go above that, <laughs> gonna be in trouble. <laughs> Could be in big trouble. Alright, so almost done on that. Let me check my noodles over here. I don't know if I'm still in the shot or not. We'll find out later. Check my noodle. Yep, they're good.
All right, we'll do a little more noodle. That's the last of that bag of noodles. All right, wow, look at this. And this does, look, and we're starting to go over the top of the thing here. This is turning out really perfect. Uh, and yes, I am going to throw in that additional can of tomatoes. I sure am. Four and a half pounds of meat. And just woefully, the poor peas are woefully underrepresented. I think I have probably 30% more corn than peas. Screw this can opener. Drink. tomatoes and stuff and all the ingredients here start mixing it up it all just kind of disappears together and you're going man that one can that sure didn't seem to be a lot oh man this looks just freaking marvelous tell you what when you're on a cold winter day and you're sitting here hungry <laughs> nothing is this stuff freezes real well so I'll, I'll take this when it gets done I'll have of course, I'll have mine. It's also uh, uh, shredding some cheddar cheese or whatever your favorite cheese, maybe a goat cheese or something to put on top of it. It always makes it more awesome. Sometimes if it's not hot enough, you, if you're one of the guys or people like me, guys like me that like hot sauce. When I say hot sauce, I'm not talking about picante. I'm talking about little peas, Texas peas, um, Tabasco, um, uh, Damn it. Louisiana, Chihula, whatever, you like hot sauce, right? Always a few dashes of that to, to give it a little extra zing. Because, you know what? If your sinuses aren't running all over your face, then it's just not hot enough. These days I might make some Texas hot dish and we'll get some, uh, get some of those uh, ghost peppers or some little hot little babies in there. <laughs> Then invite over some people from Michigan or something, or Wisconsin. You know, people who think that that basically uh, their idea of salsa is something like ketchup. If they would ever have a Texas ghost pepper, it probably render them lifeless. <laughs> it would not be pretty. Take your time with the stirring. I want all your ingredients to be flying on the kitchen floor. Of course, that is why I have a house wolf too. Schultz. Schultz's job is to police the floor. Because yeah, at the end of the day, Schultz is basically a furry garbage can. Whatever hits the floor is his. You know, I don't want to tell you about the wolfy version of the five-second rule. <laughs> and basically, usually for most people, guys, it's if the floor is clean, five, it's five seconds before the food is contaminated. The wolf, it's I better eat it within five seconds, otherwise it's going to be gone. <laughs> All right. Absolutely sure. Kind of going a little bit overboard on the mixing. God, just look at that. Look at that, folks. This is combat cooking. You saw me slinging all the pans. I think we're up to 49 minutes of prep time. Move in for a close up of this. It is huge. That's a wolf. Hot dish. Wolf. More hot dish. A very dirty stove. All right. Uh, cool. So, what we're going to do here. 
what we are going to do is have hot dish, put lid on hot dish. Hot dish, open the stove. Oh, that's heavy. Oh, there we go. All right, we will set timer. And let's give him about 20 minutes. Basically, everything's already cooked, so there's really no reason to have to bake it to death. Because at this point, again, as I said earlier, you're Hoping the, the flavors all commingle and blend together in the pot, and everything kind of steams and fit. You know, anything that's not cooked will become cooked. And I mean, guys, you just you just can't screw this dish up. It, the, the hardest part is just figuring out your proportions. And if you want more of a vegetarian, want just a little meat to flavor, hell, maybe you only do two pounds of beef and load it up with all kinds of other veggies and stuff. Or if you want. Uh, more meat maybe what you do is not only do you do beef maybe you uh you uh do some sausage or some chorizo or i don't know something like that and add that so it's really heavy on the meat um i hate to think you could actually make a goulash something like a pepperoni pizza goulash with all the ingredients you'd find in the supreme pizza it's an idea or well, it around something like that Anyhow, folks, I will not bore you. I will not bore you with the cleanup part of this. This thing's been recording for 51 minutes. And uh, I'm just going to police the kitchen, get it all kind of cleaned up, uh, sit down, get some water, and rehydrate for a minute. Oh, those onions. <sighs> Too bad they don't have smell vision. Anyhow, I uh, appreciate you sticking it out through this video. And I uh, hope we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Deuces.